Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're continuing with our Arduino tutorials with digital input. If you remember last time, we had talked about digital output and controlling the onboard LED uh, connected to pin 13 on the Arduino. Uh, just a reminder, uh, I've disabled my pin 13 onboard LED, so I've got it hooked up using an external LED. So my example will be exactly the same as yours, except instead of looking here, you're going to be looking here, but on your Arduino, you'll be looking here. That makes sense. But today, we're continuing, like I said, we're going to be going on to digital input. So again, output last time, input this time. So you're going to probably need one of these. Uh, this is a tactile switch, momentary on off, or momentary on rather. It's just a simple push button like you'd find in, well, I really don't know what you'd find a switch like this on. But what we're going to do uh, is go ahead and put this on our breadboard. Before we do that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about these kinds of switches because these are a little confusing, and I always find it's good to talk about these with people who are new. There are two pins on either side. But the tricky thing to remember is that some of these pins are connected directly and some are connected through the button. And you've got to figure out which is which. So if you have your handy dandy multimeter, which I do, what you're going to go ahead and do is set it to, I'll show you the dial here, continuity mode. That's continuity mode. It's also diode mode, but it's continuity mode on mine. So that when you make a when your circuit is continuous, it should make a noise. So, if we look at our switch, and I hold one probe here, and one probe directly on the opposite side, hear that beep? That means that if we look at these two back pins here, these two are connected directly. But if I take this and hook it here, and this one on the diagonal, so I'm going to hook it to this one, which is closest to you. Oops, sorry, touching the back one. You can hear it doesn't go off immediately. But if I push the button, oh, lost contact. That means that the diagonal, diagonals of this button, are connected to one another by the push. So that's how we're going to have to set up this circuit. So, come back here. If we take this, what you're going to do is these two, the ones that are closest together, are going to straddle the ridge of the breadboard. So you're just going to go ahead and push it in to the holes. And you're going to try and make as good contact with the metal rails as you can. And it shouldn't move around. Okay, so you've got that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take two jumpers. There's a blue jumper. i to straighten that out. So I'm going to take one, put it over here and connect it to one of these pins. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to lift this up so you can see the labels. And it's the third one down. One, two, three. That's five volts. Sorry if you can't see that. My camera is kind of crap. There we go. Five volts. And then we're going to connect the diagonal. Oops, grab an extra jumper. The diagonal, so upper right, lower left. And we're going to connect that to pin 2, 0, 1, 2, on the Arduino. Okay, so there's our circuit. Uh, what we're going to do in code is when you push this button, it's going to turn the LED on. So let's look at the computer. So I've gone ahead and I've opened up the Arduino IDE, which again, last time we'd set up. And I've already got my Arduino hooked up to my computer. So what we're going to go ahead and do is start writing the code. Now, if you remember last time that there are two important methods we have to call when writing our code. And they must be called in every piece of code you write if you're going to be using the Arduino IDE. First one being void setup and the second being void loop. Okay, so in our setup, what we're going to do is, like last time, we're going to declare pin 13 as an output. 
so that it can be turned on and off. What we're going to do different this time is we're going to set pin th 2, not 13, sorry, pin 2 as an input so that we can read data from it. And in our loop, what we're going to say is if digital read, so like when we wanted to write out to pin 13, we'd write digital write, but if we want to read from digital 2, we're going to say digital read and digital read is going to return two states either on or off it so digital read two so if digital read two equals high so if the pin is high remember we set the pin so that when we pushed it it would be connected to five volts so it would be turned on so it's high so we're going to digital write the same state to pin thirteen high else if it's off if it's anything other than high, we're going to say digital write 13 low. And that's it. And it's just going to keep looping through that, checking to see if digital read 2 is high. And if it is, it's going to turn it on. And if it's not, it's going to turn it off. So we're going to go ahead and hit upload. And we're going to go look at the Arduino. So if we look at the circuit, you're going to notice you probably have a problem. So uh, I'm going to turn off my light so you can see this a little better. If you push the button, no matter what, it stays on. But you can see it gets a little uh, brighter. See, there's a problem we have. And you see how it changes? Even if I unplug this, okay, I unplug it, it turns off. But even if I unplug the blue 5 volt jumper, it stays on. No matter what I do, it's going to stay on. So that's a problem. Ooh, sorry about that. Now, the problem that has is when this switch is open, when it's not connected to 5 volts, I'm going to just unplug the Arduino for a second. When this is open, when you've not pushed the button, it, it's called open, it's not connected to 5 volts. But it's also not connected to the 0 volt ground. Now this is a third state and it's called floating. And we need to solve this floating issue because any stray current in our system is going to cause it to flick on or off or stay completely on. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a solution which you can which I talked about in another video and I'll put it a link to it right here. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tweak the code and we're going to have to tweak our circuit a little bit as well. So rather than connecting this 5 volt jumper, or this jumper to 5 volts, we're going to unplug it, and I'm going to tilt this up again so you can see it, and I'm going to connect it to one of the grounds. There are two grounds here, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to one of those, and I'm going to leave this pin 2 jumper where it is. So let's go back and tweak our code just a bit. Okay, so we've got to fix our code to make it work. Now, the problem is it's floating, and we need to solve that. So we're going to impl implore something called a pull-up resistor. And luckily for us, the uh, Arduino has pull-up resistors built into the chip itself. And it's really easy to set in the code. What you're going to do is right under pin mode 2, you're going to write digital write 2 high. Now that might seem a little strange because pin 2 isn't an output, it's an input. Well, the chip itself is set up so that if you set that pin as an input and you call it high and you, you, know, you turn it on, what it's actually doing is enabling the pull-up resistor on that pin. Again, it's built onto every single pin in the chip. And by, calling, by turning it, that input pin on, it enables that pull-up. Now we're also going to have to tweak this bit of code because if you know your pull up resistors it's inverting so when it's not on it's on and when it's not and when it's on it's not on it'll make sense in just a second so instead of saying digital read 2 equals high we're gonna say low because again it's inverting so when you close it the switch when you push the button it's actually going to pull that pin to ground and turn the LED on. And when you 
open the switch, when you release the button, it's gonna the pin's going to go back to its 5 volts because it's been pulled up by the resistor and turn the LED off. So I've gone ahead and connected the Arduino again. I'm just going to hit upload and let's see the result. Okay, so if you notice now, we're not pushing the button and the LED is not on. So we seem to have solved our problem. But let's make sure. So I'm going to kill the light again. There we go. If I push the button, it turns on. And if I let go, it turns off. It's kind of fun. Okay, so there you have it. You've figured out the issue with leaving this floating and you've fixed it and gotten it to work every single time so pull-ups you're gonna turn the light back on shield your eyes there pull-ups while they can be a bit confusing in the code they are extremely helpful without actually adding any external circuitry they make sure that every single time this button's pushed the LED comes on so, uh, this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.